Mrs. Lisa Wolf, the art teacher at Price Elementary School, had a grant that was funded by the Educational Foundation, which she called Animals in Art. She had purchased a lot of different animals so that children could use them for drawing lessons. Here we have three of the sixth grade girls who are drawing and using some of these artifacts for inspiration. Shanna's making a picture of some birds that she's copying off of an oriental fan. Ariane is drawing a picture of a giraffe while Tammy is creating a lion from a hand puppet. Mrs. Wolf, the art teacher, applied for this grant the year the theme at the school was Carnival of the Animals. By filling this case with a variety of animals in different art forms, she was able to use these artifacts to inspire children in all grades from K through 6 in their study of the animals and in their drawings. The foundation awarded a grant to Mrs. Terry Butson at the Price Elementary School to purchase a collection of ethnic instruments. These unusual instruments give children a chance to experiment with rhythm and creating music of their own. It also provides the opportunity for improvisation, as you're going to see demonstrated here right now by George, Elliot, and Alex. Elliot is playing the kalimba, which is sometimes called the thumb piano. Now we're adding the rain stick. Another grant that was awarded to Price School enabled the librarian and some of the teachers to select a group of tapes that are housed in the library. These tapes include a variety of different types of songs and music from around the world. There are ethnic songs, there are folk tales, tapes that can be used for dancing. Here we have three of the preschoolers enjoying some of the tapes this morning, clapping along, developing rhythmic skills. We've been very lucky to get many grants at our school and they allowed us to bring two authors. The first author that we brought to Price School was Robin Moore. He wrote The Bread Sister of Sinking Creek, Maggie Among the Seneca. When he came, we had read these books to prepare for him, but he didn't really talk about those books. Instead, he did folk tales and storytelling. He had an incredible gift for being able to hold the attention 
of half of the school at a time. I've never seen 300 students sit as quietly and as engrossed in the story as they were for him, so it was a wonderful experience. Just two years ago, we were lucky to get Olivier Dunray. His books are so popular that this is the only one that's in in the library right now. He does lots of easy books for kids. He also did this book, Scarabray, the story of a prehistoric village. When he did his all-school assembly for the students, he talked about writing this book and doing his research in Scotland. And he was a wonderful storyteller, too, and talked about how he had spent the night in a cave with lots of bones, and he had the kids pleasantly scared out of their wits. <laughs> then he did smaller sessions up in the library where he did drawings and talked to the kids about being a children's author and illustrator. So we appreciated the support from the foundation very much. Howdy. Several years ago, I had a grant from the foundation that enabled me to purchase artifacts to use to um, enhance social studies concepts. Some of the things that we purchased are here in this table, and I have three of my former students here with me right now who are looking at some of these artifacts and reminiscing about social studies ideas that they mastered in fourth grade. Diana, tell us what you remember about Betsy Ross. Um, she lived in, on Arch Street in the city of Philadelphia, and her name is Betsy Ross, as you can see, and everybody believes that she made the first flag. Okay. And Kimberly and Jesse, what do you got to remember about Ben Franklin? Well, his father was a candle maker, and a soap maker. So good. Did Ben become a candle maker and a soap maker, too? No, he did not. Why not? His father wanted him to be a soul and bring a candle maker, but he chose not to be. And what did he decide to be? A writer. He was a writer? What else did he do? He was involved in the Declaration of Independence. He was a printer. Okay, and here we have some of the type of letters that he would have used to set his type when he was a printer down in Philadelphia. Um, and he always wore a brown velvet suit the castle because he thought the king wasn't any better than he was. Okay, and here we have a little model of Ben in his famous brown velvet suit that he wore when he went to see the King of England and the King of France, I believe. Kim, you have your hand on a quill pen there. Why do you think that's significant? Because then when he would write his story, he would write with a pen that had feathers. Okay, and Jesse mentioned a famous document that he signed. All right. Do you, can you think of anything else he might have signed? There was another, uh, after the Declaration of Independence, there were a set of laws made up for our country, and Ben helped draft that also. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a clue. It begins with a C. Yes, the Constitution. Thank you, girls, for reminiscing about Ben this morning. We are now in the electronic classroom which is housed at Reynolds Junior High School in the school district of Lancaster. This is one of the largest projects that was ever funded by the Educational Foundation for the students and teachers in the school district. This very unique setup allows one teacher to service all of the junior high schools. One foreign language teacher works here in the morning and teaches lessons in both German and in Latin. These lessons are broadcast to the other junior high schools, enabling students at all four city junior high schools to study these two languages without having a teacher at all of the schools. Eventually, this concept will be expanded to include other subject matter as well. Cameras located strategically around the room broadcast the lesson to the other junior high schools. Because of the advanced equipment that is available here at Reynolds Junior High School, the students at the other junior highs can also interact with the teacher. In other words, they can ask questions 
Here are the three monitors for the other three junior high schools, and the teacher here at Reynolds can respond to their questions. One of the more colorful grants this year was given to Mrs. Linda Cook down at Washington School for a program about clowning. Mrs. Cook, who worked as a professional clown herself, has shared her love of clowning with her students in this intermediate learning support class. Right now, a group of students are out in the hall applying their makeup as they get ready, ready for a presentation. Let's zoom in and get some close-up shots. Okay, the aide, Mrs. Cosenza, is helping the children put on their makeup. Clowning takes a lot of organization. And the children have developed a lot of good working habits through this project. Jose, who are you going to be? Jose the Clown. Hmm? And how about this young lady? Who are you going to be this afternoon? Love the Clown. Wow, look at that great face. Uh, would you like to tell her your clown name? Rosie the Clown. Rosie. And does Rosie do anything special? Yes. And how about the lady over there at the end? Who are you going to be? Okay, come on. Once you get the white faces on, then we can start adding color. How cool is Mrs. Cook? Mrs. Cosenza is aiding one of the students putting the white background on. Now, Jose, can you look here? Good. Jose has his white background on, and he's beginning to apply some color to his face. This project, Crowning in the Classroom, has provided these students with a chance to improve their own behavior and at the same time internalize good behavior habits. Makeup is starting to materialize now. The students have learned how to apply it. They've had to learn how to put an act together through this project to keep track of their materials. They've created a stage for this project which will be used in performances for the whole school. They've developed the background materials and their own individual tricks that they will be performing. Each student in the class has assumed the character of a particular clown with unique personality traits. Okay, that mouth is really starting to take shape. Students must con practice self-control in preparing for such a project. Personal behavior contracts are being used as one of the tools to evaluate this project. Obviously, the students that we have seen here today who are applying their makeup will have very positive comments on their behavior contracts. Let me see. 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 Let me
Jose right should do. Jose is ready to put on the rest of his costume. Good job. That makeup looks super. Obviously, Mrs. Cook's entire classroom and all the students have taken on a very clowning, festive atmosphere. Here we have some boys who are making some clowns. This is the stage that they use here in their classroom. Raphael, could you show us that clown that you've made? And what are you going to do with it now, Raphael? Okay. How did you make the clown? Can you tell us anything about its construction? There's a piece of paper you take. You cut off the head, then you color the mouth, the nose, then you then you use it, and you take take the um, the circle, the outside of the face, and you put the mouth, the nose, and the eyes, and the one. Then you after you're done with that, you put the dots and the shoes. Then you in the back and on the other side, you do the same thing. Looks good. By the way, Mrs. Cook has informed me that the curtains for the stage were all sewn by the students here in the classroom. A little bit about the curtains that you made. Uh, <laughs> had you ever used a sewing machine before, Ruben? Yeah. Oh, you had, so you knew all about sewing. Everybody got to sewing. Everybody in the class had a turn? Good. We make everything fair with the chairs we have. Everybody gets the hat of um, Bozo um, Sedge. This is um, the hat of Kerry of um, Buttercup. Buttercup. This is the hat of Luffy. Luffy. Thank you very much. Okay, and back in the art gallery, we have more clown artwork that has been made by the students in this classroom. Lewis, can you tell us a little bit about those? Oh, that's pretty good, but uh-oh, I don't think that's enough to fill 
a tank and put out a fire, a little fire. Maybe you better put a little sprinkle some magic into your sprinkle magic into your pitcher. Okay. All right. Now let's count to three and see if it works. Ready? One, two, three. See if it works. Hey, your magic does work. You couldn't do that again, could you, Butterscotch? Go ahead, sprinkle more magic water, sprinkle. All right, let's see if it works. One, two, three. Oh, my goodness, that was wonderful. Let's give Butterscotch a big hand. Now, that was a good rehearsal. Introducing Bozo the Clown. Now, Bozo, did you bring your magic paper today? Uh-oh. You don't have any magic. You didn't Oh, that silly old magic paper. Now, Bozo, can you do your magic trick with the magic paper? Would you like to get a helper? Two helpers. Okay, pick two helpers. Okay, come on up here, friends. Now, boys, what you're going to do is take a piece of paper from our clown Bozo and follow his instructions perfectly. Are we ready for the magic paper dance? Shake it in the front. Shake it in the back. Shake it in the front. In the back. In the front. In the back. In the front. And now we're going to spin it around three times. One and two and three. Now you're going to make a nice little ball with your magic paper. Very good. Now ever so carefully place it in Bozo's hand. Ever so carefully. And now, Bozo, would you get some of that magic paper dust out of your pocket? I hope you brought that magic dust. Mm -hmm. And all the boys and girls are going to throw magic dust to you. There we go. Now, Bozo, let's see what you do with that magic paper. Give it a try. Now, this is rehearsal. And tomorrow is the big day for the show. Stefan, scoot back so then we, we can see the show. Oh my goodness, that is magic! Give him a great big hand for that wonderful magic. We have the last group here who were thinking about your ideas. Will you come up to the last group and tell us about your ideas and show us some of the things you were thinking of doing? You need to hear Barry? Yeah. 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 Pull away from each other. Those of you who were, will you go back to where you were, where you were pulling away from each other? And you're there. You're there. You're pulling away. Can the two of you work your way through them? Come on, let's go. Let's go between them and inside them. Let's go. Inside. 